On Thursday afternoon, March 29th, 2007, this is Bill Hurd along with John Litsky. We are working on the Wilkes Oral History Project, and our our interview person for this period is Larry Faw. Hello, Larry. Larry Miller. Larry Miller, not Faw, F A W. No. Okay. She married a Faw. I married a Faw. All right. Well, our uh, record keeper has has had an oops then. So Larry Miller. Correct. M-I-L-L-E-R. Correct. Larry, my, my apologies to you for the getting out. That's okay. Getting it wrong to start with. You are a Vietnam veteran. Yes. You made it through some of the biggest yes, I did. events of the war. Yes, I did. And came back home. Yes. God bless. Yeah, God looked after me. Yes. What yeah. was it like? Very bad. Uh, I was married about two months, and they got my orders to go into service, and I uh, went to Charlotte, and I uh, was in a big long line, and everybody in front of me this was uh, putting them in the army, mm -hmm. and it got up to my time, and he punched USMC on my paperwork, and I said, what's that? And they said, do you now in the United States Marine Corps? And I, and I said, oh, no, I'm not. And took, two MPs took me out there and put me on a bus, sent me to Paris Island. And they treated me real good down there, real kind. <laughs> and uh, All Marines get that same uh, kind Yes, they do. Well, I made it through that. And then I got my orders to go up to the Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I went up there, took about two more months of training. Well, then I got my 20-day leave to go home and spend some time with my wife. And uh, yeah, I'd already got my orders to go to Camp Pendleton, California to go to Vietnam. So after my leave, I went to uh, Camp Pendleton, California. I took more training there. And on the, somewhere, around, somewhere around the 1st of January, I left out to go to Vietnam, and I went by ship. It took 19 days, 19 nights to get to Vietnam, and I was seasick for every day I was on there, I was seasick. I lost a pound for every day I was there. Wow. Well, when I got to, Viet I got to Vietnam and landed in uh, Da Nang, I got off the ship, in about 15 minutes, I was well. I was glad to see land. I can imagine. And, uh, and from Da Nang, they took me up to a place called Phu Bai. And I stayed... Uh, well, for there, I got with a company, and in this company, uh, I was with Arlene North was my lieutenant, and I served under him for about uh, four months. When his time was up, he come back to the states, and then uh, I stayed through my about five months, and then from there we started going north. What was your rank? Well, I was a PFC. And uh, while I was there, I got promoted to a Lance Corporal. And from uh, Fuba, I went to a place called uh, Dong Ha. And I stayed there for a while. And then from there, I went on to Quezon. And I spent most of my time while I was there in Quezon. It was a very, very bad place. It's on top of a mountain where they cleared it all, made a big base out of it. And the reason we was there was Quezon was trying to stop the enemy coming from the north to invade into the south. And uh, they tried to overrun us many, many times while I was there. And we had to dig trenches down below the ground level so we could walk, because we was taking mortar rounds and artillery rounds and rockets all the time, day and night. You couldn't hardly get any sleep, no rest. And it was just a bad, bad experience. Sir. And you... You were there for how long? 13 months. Well, almost 13 months. And you saw combat? Yes. Lots of combat? Lots of it. Everybody who went to Vietnam saw combat? Y yes. Uh, just, there was no, no, no way to avoid it? No. If you didn't see it, see it, uh, you hear it, or uh, the mortar rounds are falling around you, or hearing shots all the time. And after 13 months, yes. you came home? Uh, when my time was up, 
I couldn't get out to leave because it was nobody could get in there to get me out. And it hadn't come up a little old storm with fog and rain, and a helicopter hadn't come in there. And so I run, jumped on it, and got out. Went, took me back down to the Nangan for Mary and left to come home. Okay. Now, that, that's the foundation of your story, but that's just the beginning. Oh, yes. What we're here to talk about is not your first time in Vietnam, but your second time. <laughs> now, catch us up on story. You, uh, you came back home. And, uh, well, yes, I come back home, and, and 40 years later, I went back to Vietnam and Cambodia. Did you go back alone? No. Who'd you go with? I went with the Baptist Home Missionary. We went back as missionaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a real job. I had a good time, had a lot of fun, made a, made a lot of friends. And I stayed in Cambodia, I guess, eight days. Mm -hmm. And that was a very, very sad for me to see how people lived and how poor they were, and they need really need help in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Very bad. And if I get a chance, I want to go back to Cambodia because they need our help. And uh, from, from Cambodia, we went to Vietnam, and uh, me and Kip, my brother, we went to Vietnam. And I couldn't believe how much it had changed in 40 years. Uh, seeing all the new hotels and the towns and cities, and what amazed me, how friendly the people was. Because at one time I had a lot of hatred in my heart for what had happened there. Yes. But not now. I feel, uh, now I feel my heart's full of peace. And the people live good, and everybody's happy. It's much better than what it used to be. Good. And you, you have personal peace now? Yes. Yes, I do. Does this have a lot to do with the circumstances in which you went back, that is, with missionaries? Y yes. And your state of mind based upon yes. being part of a missionary organization? Yes. Yes, it, I feel much better than I used to. Kind of. The people, uh, and now there has learned to speak English, the Vietnamese. And I said, how come you learn to speak English? They don't count the USA, trading, and, uh, but they're much, much friendly than I ever expected. I wouldn't expect it. They're very warm people. What did the former places of battle look like? What, what had changed? They had grown up. They've tore down a lot of the bunkers. They've tore a lot of it down. And even the airfields have changed. The jungles have been cut down. Uh, they have a, plant, a factory about like Abbey Tibby there where they haul the wood to. They've cut the rubber plantations down. But they still have the rice paddies and that. And the water buffalo still have that. With the... Uh Synthetic rubber and other products up there. I guess natural rubber doesn't have much of a place. No, no, no. So they've changed mm -hmm. over to more profitable crops. Yes, they have. And when I was there 40 years ago, there's a lot of pot belly pigs. This time I didn't see but one. They've gone goats. And they brought the pot belly pigs over yeah. here to be pets. Yeah, now they got goats there. <laughs> but it, it was a big change. The people was real friendly. And uh, the people I've fought against, uh, that generation has died out. Just a very few of them's living. Because the generation over there don't live as long as we do. Average 40, 45 years. Yeah, when I was there 40 years ago, the average life is 40, 45. Now it's around 70 to 75. They're getting better food? Yes. Better nutrition? Yes. Uh, better medical care? Yes. They're much better off now than they was 40 years ago. It's amazing to know how many folks in underdeveloped countries die yes. from teeth abscesses mm -hmm. because they have no way of getting the teeth out. They have no dental service, and mm. that'll kill you. Abscess too can kill you. Uh, in Cambodia, we've seen signs where people have broke arms, broke legs, TB, all kinds of diseases, and they don't have no doctor, no help. Yeah. And so they have to suffer with it or, or, or die. But... Uh, I'm looking forward to going back. 
there is a there is a story here and probably something that you can talk to other veterans about because I know a lot of Vietnam era veterans mm -hmm. who are still incredibly bitter and incredibly oppressed over their their experiences mm -hmm. and you have found a way to make it better by going mm -hmm. back. Would you suggest yes. this to anybody? Yes, anybody that, that that went through a lot over there and have bitter or uh, hatred against them, they need to go back and see what it is today. And believe me, it'll change your outlook. Good. Larry, let's talk about you personally for just a minute. And uh, are you a Wilkes County native? Yes, I am. What part of the county did you grow up in? I was raised up in Pelier. Pelier, okay. Another precinct heard from. Mm. <laughs> what, uh, what was Pelier like? When you were a young man? Well, when I was young, and better about everybody lived off the land, they farmed, they had maybe a cow or two, they had a mules, mm -hmm. maybe a horse, and, and everybody on the weekends on Sunday, they would get together as a family and eat dinner together and enjoy life together. But today they don't do that. What church did you go to? I went to Lewis Fort. Still around? Lewis Fork. Lewis Fork Baptist Church. Right. I was born saved when I was 14 year old. And I was baptized in Lewis Fork Creek. Seems like a good place to be baptized. Yes. So things have changed. Yes, very much. And not for the better. No. How could we do better, Larry? What, what, what could we get back to that would make it a better place? Here in the United States? Yeah. Well, I think families need to get closer back together instead of running and going to the malls and running and going shopping. Mm -hmm. Go and visit the families like we used to when we was young. Yeah. Don't need to travel as much. No. Family's important, and that seems to have been minimized. Yes. Uh, where Do you still live in the Perlier area? No, I live in uh, Meadows Creek. The state of the world today, uh, what's going on right now in Iraq, this kind of thing, what's your opinion? Well, I don't think our work's done in Iraq. We need to stay there longer. Don't let nobody run us off until our work is finished. Because then people need help. And a lot of people throw us off about it. And don't understand, but they need to go over and see what's going on to find out what the truth is. Do you see any similarities between your times in Vietnam and that conflict and what's going on today in Iraq? Well, not really, because that war is entirely different. Uh, during that war, when you seen the enemy, you had to wait there in Vietnam. You had, hands are tied. You had to wait they shoot at you first before you could return fire. And uh, in Iraq, I don't think it's that way. Interesting. Interesting. And as to Wilkes County today, you have grown up here. Yes. You've seen it develop. You've seen it come to the point it's at today. What do you envision for Wilkes County in the next 10 to 20 years? What do you see mm -hmm. happening here? Well... I don't, I don't see it's going to grow any larger because all our factories, our job is just going and leaving. And I don't see why, why anybody would want to come to our county because there's not, nothing here for them. There's no, there are no jobs. There's so many people that have a job. I think there should be somebody working trying to keep our jobs here for us. But Wills County, I've been to the all over the world, and Wills County is one of the finest places, in the, I think, in the world to live. People are friendly. We've got everything here we need except just jobs. So if we get a few more jobs, mm. we'd be doing good stuff. We would. All right. Well, Larry, I appreciate your comments. The, the being a veteran and going back is a new aspect of our oral history tradition, and I'm happy to see a peaceful outcome mm. for you. I'm happy for him. I really am. Thank you very much. For reference, someone can give me a
Now here's a big picture of me when I was in the Marines. Hang on for just a second. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Larry served with Oliver North during his time in Vietnam, and in at least one occasion, Ollie saved Larry. Picture. Yes, I okay. was drafted when I was 22 year old. Okay. I'm rolling. This is 22 year old private first class Larry Miller, United States Marine. Looking very confident. And cut the uh, bill, stand by. And rolling. Larry Miller, United States Marine, in country in Vietnam at Quezon. Okay. I'm pulled what you got there, I'm rolling. Okay. Fellow Marines who were in Vietnam with Larry, Larry is the only survivor. Now is Larry and all? We all, Larry, so do <laughs> we, we all. all. <laughs> Okay, uh, Bill, I'm rolling on the upper, the one upper left there. Okay. Okay. Did you uh, want a little verbiage with it? Yeah, just identifying. Okay. Larry Miller with shirt off Good. in the midst of uh, his Marine Corps buddies looks to be in a barracks in country in Vietnam. Okay. And this oh. is me. Same thing, that's fine. Okay. In this picture, Larry is on the left. Again, in country in Vietnam with fellow Marine who's not with us any longer.